Hi, I'm here with Mr. Zayn Ramatar, this year's Cape top performer, who scored 14 grade ones and a grade two. Zayn, hi, thank you for joining us. Hello, how are you? I'm quite well. How are you feeling after the news of yesterday? Well, you know, um, yesterday when it hit was big excitement. I mean, today it's starting to wear off a little bit, but yesterday I was overjoyed, ecstatic even, to hear about um, this development and something that really compounded this whole feeling of joy or this ecstatic feeling was the fact that um, we were blindsided by the actual release of the results. It wasn't a case where they were saying, oh, um, results will be released today. It's just out of the blue results. And of course, it was a, a good result in my case, so overjoyed. Um, you wrote exams since last year, 2020. What have you been doing since? Well, since uh, that, I have become a teacher at my alma mater, Queen's College, and I'm teaching physics there. Okay, um, and you, during that time, have you applied to any schools, anything of the sort? Yes, I applied to some schools in the US and I got into a few, but the one that I am heavily considering right now is the University of Southern California. Is there a particular reason why, perhaps a career choice? Well, yes, um, I really want to study physics because I would like to be, I would like to have a job in the field of physics. I'm not exactly entirely sure what job yet, probably a lecturer in the field of physics. And that university is notorious for having great research facilities. And I really am excited to go conduct research. With me and Common Entrance, I was sixth in the country. I performed well there because it was a small number of subjects and you had to more you had to know more depth than breadth. As for CSEC, that is an examination that focuses more on breadth than depth because you see people writing like 19, 20 subjects and I realized that's not for me. So I just picked my few, 13, and I made sure I did well in those. But then I realized CAPE was an exam that focuses heavily on depth and you're not writing these exorbitant subject amounts like 14, 15, 16 different subjects. They're all like related, like maths, maths, phys, chem, bio, they're all sciences and stuff like that. So I realized that this is my time. I can do it again because depth rather than breadth and that's one of my strong points. Following those examinations, there was a bit of a hiccup with the Caribbean Examinations Councils and your grades and the grades of your colleagues. You know, what was that experience like and, and how did it affect you? After CAPE 1, I was the top CAPE 1 student with seven grade ones. So I basically had my foot halfway through the door expecting that I would have been the top CAPE 2. So having this um, taken away from me and seeing me getting like a four and stuff in maths and I am a math student, um, it, really, it really affected me and I, I took it on. Um, I gained a lot of weight, which I lost now thankfully, but it was like you were, I was stressing myself over the results and it took a lot of help from my dad, my mom and the teachers around me mm -hmm. to help me realize that this whole thing was out of my control, right? So I had to accept that and move on from it. But I took a very uh, activist role from the start and um, literally as soon as this hiccup happened, I was there with Queens College and we did a press conference like almost right away, I think the day after. Um, talking about how we felt about the whole examination result. Mm -hmm. Now do you feel this sort of vindication? Uh, I don't, I don't, I don't know really if I feel any sort of vindication, but they, they did take time to fix it, which I am happy for. They said they would have gone through and review it. The only issue I have with that was that the length of time that took. For that to happen, I couldn't put like, top students on my university applications and such because they couldn't get the results to get in time. So that's my big issue with them, the time that it took to fix everything. As we're winding down, you know, um, you are a top student. A lot of people might be looking up to you. A lot of people are looking up to you. What would you say to those students who are coming up? I'm going to offer a different set of advice. Usually from when I read in the papers, the top student usually says, oh, I burnt the midnight oil and stuff like that. I didn't burn the midnight oil. Um, my advice to them is you don't look to a top, a top student to see how that top student study. You need to realize that everybody is different. You need to learn yourself or learn to know yourself and focus on those subjects that you are weak on or weak in.